You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. What a beautiful day for horses in the morning. You are listening to the number one horse podcast in the world. Here's your entertaining look at the horse world and the people in it. Well, good morning, everybody. I am Glenda Geek in Ocala, Florida. And I'm Jamie Jennings in Norman, Oklahoma. You're listening to Horses in the Morning on the Horse Radio Network for Monday, May 13th, episode 3430, brought to you today by Worm Flooring. Good morning, horse people. <sighs> <sighs> you heard that right. It's Monday. That makes me yawn. The first day of a fabulous week of shows on Horses in the Morning. <laughs> So saddle up and ride along. We promise to help you get through your week. Wow, well, good to have you back, my friend. Thank you. That intro made me yawn. <laughs> <laughs> he does a good yawn, that guy. <laughs> well, Victoria Tolman's going to join us today from the Equus Survival Trust, and she's going to tell us about the four-day Endangered Equines Festival. Jamie is, of course, back, and she competed in her first horse show in, what, four years? Since 2019, yeah. Wow. So we're going to hear all about that and how many blue ribbons she took home <laughs> <laughs> and how big those jumps were. And then we have some questions for First World Problems. Hang around in the post show. Jamie's going to talk about her tack choices for this particular show, and we'll go over that. Speaking of shows, over the weekend was one of the five star, big five star competition, competitions in the event world. It's the one everybody knows. Badminton always happens a couple of weeks after Kentucky. And it was, it, it proved that eventing is not just dressage. You know how we say eventing is a dressage show now? That freaking course, though, dude, was like, I mean, how do you even dream up things like this and think a horse is ever going to jump it? <laughs> I know. You know what I noticed about that course, and Kim Walna said the same thing, excuse me, <clears throat> is that it's very natural looking. There's less of the big fishes and, you know, that kind of stuff. It's, it is very natural looking if you decide you want to run around and jump, I don't know, an entire rainforest <laughs> yeah, at the same I time. I know. It is crazy, but beautiful. I mean, absolutely beautiful. So after dressage, Ross Cantor, big surprise, was in first, Bobby Upton in second, and Tim Price in third. But then cross country came. And Tim Price stepped into the top spot. He went from third to first after a clear round. William Fox Pitt to, took second over uh, after cross country. But the big news of the day was that a, an Irish girl who was the first time at badminton named Lucy Lotta delivered her fastest round of the, the, the fastest round of the day and climbed to get this from 46 to third. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so that just tells you that, you know, it's not just a dressage show anymore. And then jumping was tough, too. 17 horses, the first 17 horses went out, and between them, they had 59 poles. That's an average of three and a half poles per rider for the first 17 horses that went out. So it was a tough, a tough jumping day, too. Tim Price was the overnight leader, but had 20 faults, which saw him drop to eighth. Oh. Fox Pitt was going into Sunday's show jumping finale as he attempted to win the event for the third time at the age of 55, but he had six fences down, dropped him in the 13th place. By the way, he said that's his last bad badminton. He's I was going to say he, he like announced his retirement after that. Yeah. And then New Zealand's Carolyn Powell went from sixth to first to end up winning the event. But remember when I said Irish Lucy, who went up 40 places after cross country, she ended up finishing second. That's ridiculously cool. <laughs> Congratulations. Can you imagine sitting in 46th place and then coming in second? It's never over. And you know, sometimes you've seen those riders in Kentucky, they finish dressage in 46 and they just withdraw. See, y'all should have stayed in. Well, you know who else had a a monumental event at badminton was Boyd Martin. Now, it wasn't his placing. It was the fact that the, he is now the second athlete ever to compete in every five-star in the world. That's crazy. I mean, because, there's seven okay, of them. There's Adelaide in Australia, Kentucky, and of course, USA, Maryland, five-star, Lemuelin in Germany, Burley in Great Britain, 
I can't even say it. There's Poe po, in I France. Les po. <laughs> five toilets de po. And then there's badminton. I mean, that's ridiculous that you go to all over the world and do that. And he's won Maryland and he's won Adelaide. And he just, just as charming. I mean, if you don't follow him on Facebook, you are missing out. He is su- such a fun person to watch. And he's also very popular in England. When you watched him, when he finished, he got huge ovations. I mean, yeah. he's very popular in England too. So congratulations so second to all the winners. Athlete- Second athlete to ever complete every five star in the world. Do we know who the other one is? I do not. Oh, no. Okay. Well, that's what we're going to have to it's do. Your assignment. Deep dive. Okay. My assignment. <laughs> Carry on. Talk amongst yourselves. All right. <laughs> happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday to you. <laughs> I have a bunch of auditor birthdays. I tried to catch up on the ones we missed at the end of last week, and I apologize if I missed anybody. Heather Weimer, Megan Lalonde, Ruth McCormick. And by the way, Ruth, thank you for the very nice email. She sent us a very nice email about the show. Julie Hansen, Jamie Harding. Alicia Kay, Bethany Joe McNett, Andrew Dixon. Hi, Andrew. And whoever I missed at the end of last week. I can only go back so far on Facebook, and I apologize if I missed you. Do you have an answer yet? I'm working on it. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. I think I, it says here, Colleen and Shiraz. Colleen Rutledge and Shiraz are the only horse and rider combination in history to compete all five Northern Hemisphere events. So that's not Adelaide. Uh, no. Uh, well, somebody let us know. Write to us. Let us know. <laughs> somebody knows a venting more than I got to move on. Yeah. Well, somebody will tell us. And don't, if it's all over town, and don't tell us. <laughs> My daily when he goes, I, I, yeah, first of all, I want to thank everybody who filled in for me last week. I had to get I was home. guessing Michael Young, by the way. Oh, that's a good one. I don't know. Yeah, oh, good. Yeah. good. It, it, let's find out. Somebody let us know. <laughs> so th- this is the information we get is he's the second. Yeah. So, well, who's the first? You got to write that down too. Anyway, so thanks to everybody for filling in for me last week. And uh, I had to get home by Friday because on Saturday, my very own sweet, precious farm boy graduated from college. Oh. Didn't he graduate from college before? No, he. this is his his graduation from college, okay. but he's has one more year because he went to grad school. Ah, and gotcha. it, I got cheated out of two years because usually grad school is two years, but he did his first year of grad school concurrent with his senior year. The dude has a big brain. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. But the cool thing was, for the first time ever, I met Farm Boy's mama. I did. You had never met her before? No, I've never met her. I met his sister. I met his brother. Let me just tell you, I expected his mom to be like nine feet tall, right? She was my height. And then I met his sister. He's like, he's taller than me. He's six, four. Okay. Then I met his sister who's probably five, 10, five, 11. And I was like, well, she's, you know, I'm tall too. But his mama was like normal size. And then I met his lumberjack of a brother. (laughs) Good God. This guy was like nine feet tall and like. (laughs) just a big solid human i was like oh my god he's a giant they're all giants and i asked his mama i said how did that happen she's like i don't know i don't know hit dad's side of the family i guess whatever but it was so cool to meet his mama and and she oh my god she wrote me the nicest card and got me a bottle of wine and just say thanking me for taking care of her son all these years and giving him a place to you know go while he was in school it totally made me cry it was very sweet and she and i got along great and his sister's super cool and just, it was just a really fun experience and then to go lucas and chad and i it was a really big honor to be invited. I, I thought we went to like a, a family party and then to the graduation and it was just his family and us and to watch him walk across the stage. It was fantastic. And it was just really, really sweet. And his family was really appreciative of all the things I've done. And I'm like, no, you have to understand, like, I'm appreciative of the things he's done for me. You know, like, I mean, he's a part of our family now. And they uh, they really were grateful for that. And it was funny. So before I met his mama on Saturday, on Friday, he was out riding. And I was like, hey, should there anything I should probably know not to tell your mom? Like, you know, little secrets. And he was like, listen, what happens in the barn stays in the barn. 
And I was like, done. I <laughs> gotcha. So like Saturday's mom like pulls me aside. She's like, so is there anything I should know about Barrett? And I was like, actually, no, man, he is like just the greatest kid. <laughs> he is fantastic. Like my loyalty is to your son. <laughs> no, I, I, nothing. And there was a couple of things. He was like, maybe don't mention this. And so I was like, okay, cool. And then his mama asking me, she knew there was something. I said, no, I absolutely not. He is just salt of the earth. And actually it was cool. I was like, when I met her, I was like, I'm so glad to meet the woman who is responsible for that human. Cause Cause that is a, gr he is a great human, a hardworking, young, just great. Just, just salt of the earth. No. So, well, he, I've got him this week and then he leaves for the summer for another internship. He works for one of those big, you know, he's a petroleum engineer. Is he so going he's to in Thailand this time or someplace exotic? Actually, he's going to be in South Texas, oh. like in the middle of <laughs> nowhere. In yeah, the summer. Exotic. Oh, that sounds delightful. Yeah, he's thrilled. <laughs> and then he'll be back for one more year. And, you know, I told him, I said, if this was next year, I'd be wearing all black and crying. So like, I'm going to cry. Have you started talking entire... to him about a doctorate yet? Have you ordered, offered to pay for his doctorate? Well, they, people were graduating his doctorates and I'm texting him in the front row. I'm like, <laughs> Dr. Barrett Justin sounds really good. I really think Dr. Farmboy is way to go. Like, <laughs> no response. He's like, no, nah, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, he's probably had enough of school. Yeah, but it was fantastic. Congratulations, Farmboy. It was great. Well, Worm Flooring can now do your trailer roof. Leaky roofs are a very common problem in horse trailers and RVs. Worm Flooring re revolutionary silicone-based coating creates a barrier against heat and wet. First, it seals your roof to stop the leaks before they start. Second, it reflects back nearly 90% of all the nasty UV rays, keeping your trailer or barn up to 60 degrees cooler on a blistering day, especially if you're working in South Texas. So ditch the duct tape and the buckets and invest in How did they know that I have duct tape on my roof and buckets in my tack room? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. You need both. You need worm flooring or worm roofing on your tack room too. I'm just gonna get worm to just encompass my horses. <laughs> just come spray everything. <laughs> just spray everything. Do it all. Invest in a long lasting peace of mind with Seal and Chill. It is supplied by pros for a flawless finish and it's only seven dollars and fifty cents per square foot. That and you can find a dealer near you at wormflooring.com. Now they have different dealers for the floors and the ceilings. So check out their website to find one in the W E R are for we eliminate rubber mats. You went to a horse show first time in five years, actually. I did. Yeah, I realized. Which, which horse? Let's start there. So I took Ace, who is a baby race horse. Yeah, that remind uh, me where you got Ace because I don't even remember anymore. It's kind of weird. <laughs> so, You've had so, so many horses, I can't keep them all straight. I know, but he I've had him for two years now. And so uh, he was on the sport horse. Uh, no, he was on the thoroughbred racehorse auction oh, online. Right. <laughs> and was this I, the drunk one? No, 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 no. no. That was the Andalusia. <laughs> that's, that's the other gray horse I have. Come on. Keep them, <laughs> keep them separate. So this one, Ace was on the, his name is Face Card, and he was being auctioned off. And I bid, but I got outbid. And he went up to like $5,000, which for a two-year-old racehorse, you know, whatever, it's not that much, but it was more than I had to spend. So he was sold. And then like three months later, I get a phone call from the guy who bought him because he got my number from the auction company because they were, he called him. He's like, I want to sell this horse. Who else bid on him? Cause we were in a bidding war, but then I quit. So, so he calls me and he was like, Hey, you were bidding on this horse called face card. And I would be willing to sell him to you because he's not fast. Like they couldn't even get him into a race. He was so slow. They didn't even ever race him. We'd like to sell him. And I said, okay, well, what do you want? He goes, oh, $5,000. I was like, <laughs> yeah, but if I would have bid $5,000, I would have got him. But yeah. I, I, did, I didn't bid that. I bid $1,500. I was like, so I'll give you $1,500. And he was like, no, I can't do that. That's crazy. And I was like, okay, cool. A month later, he calls me. Okay, we'll take 3,500. We'll take 3,500. And I was like, I'll give you 1,500. I was like, that's what, that's what I have to spend. So, oh, no, I got to do that. A month later, he calls me. Okay, we'll take 1,500. I was like, I'll send somebody to get him. <laughs> it's like, that was all it took. They did send me a video of him out in the paddock and trotting around and stuff. So I knew his sound and looked at some stuff. But yeah, that's how I got him. So ships him out. And I was like, oh my God, he's so nice. I'm going to give you 1,700. So I gave him an extra 200 tip. 
<laughs> I don't think so, anybody's ever been tipped for a horse thing. <laughs> well, I, I Googled this guy and he's a doctor. Like, come on, dude. Just give me the dang horse. So anyway, I said I got him and, and he was three when I got him and he was real sick when he came with like shipping fever or whatever. I don't know. So I, I really kind of the first six months didn't really do much with him. And then you know, the cobbler's kids have no shoes. Right. So like he was always the last one I would ride. So he's five now and I've been riding him a ton and just thought it was time to do something. And my, our, our friend auditor, Patty Otto, who lives down the street, she is a pusher. And it was like, there's this show we should go to. I will pick you up and I will drive you there and I will bring you home. <laughs> Okay. So she said, it's just a really friendly, fr really friendly environment for horses to go to for their first thing. And, and it was, it, so she picked me up. It's about an hour and a half away and we get there and just, there's, they had stalls to run, but I didn't run to stall. And I've never actually been able to successfully tie a horse to a trailer at a horse show. And Ace, like, tied to the horse trailer like a pro. It was awesome. And so he had his little hay bag, and I was, like, running around, tacking him up on the trailer. I, felt, I sent a picture to Chad of him tied to the trailer. Not, he, Chad wrote back, you're so Western. Like, it's so Western of me to, like, tie the horse to you know, the trailer. You know, I never, when we were showing, when Jennifer was showing, you didn't run to stalls. You tied to the trailer. I mean, yeah. 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 I, I just, I think it's because I've had so many crazies that yeah. I just have like PTSD I about think it's it. It's more of a thing now, too, though. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, it was just a one day show, and they like, it's, it's a place called Southern Hills Riding Academy. And, it's a white husband and wife that own it. And they have this ginormous covered arena and inside the arena was the dressage. And then the whole rest of the arena is warm up. I mean, it is huge covered arena It's a monumentally big structure. So we get there and I'm like, Oh crap. Ace has never been in a indoor. So <laughs> guess we'll walk around and I take it, you know, he's like snorting and stuff, but he really, really did great. Like, I think I'm better now. Like I'm better at keeping my emotions in check. And so he kind of like went off me a little bit and walked him around and took him back to the trailer, tacked him up, got on him, walked him around in the dressage arena and then went and did my test. And again, like super friendly. They let me walk him around in the dressage arena in between rides just so he could see the judges booth and all. I mean, just awesome. Just an awesome place. And they're just like, yes, yeah, do what you need to do. And I'm, I'm like that guy. I'm like, it's my first. It's his first time. Just be, be kind. But he was so good. So he did the dressage, just a walk, draw test. And then comes to, and, and Patty, do you remember the horse that I started about a year ago? His, I called him uncle Dick. Yes. <laughs> so she was riding uncle Dick. Oh. <laughs> and uh, now his name is actually Alistar and he's a very well-bred Irish sport horse. But to me, <laughs> he was so, so fun that that's what we called him. So she, she did her dress. It was just her and I in the division and we did the babiest of baby division. Like the jumps were, were supposed huge. to be, they were enormous. You they were, I was shocked. Yeah. So we go out for stadium and <laughs> it's raining and I'm like, well, we're just going to, we're going to do this. And she, she and I are sitting out there and they're, they're adjusting the jumps and we're like, no, that's too big. <laughs> They were like, like well, three inches off the ground. They were eight. They, well, they were supposed to be 18 inches, which is like the third hole. And I was like, we were like, bottom hole. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they were like six. They, you practically ground poles. <laughs> they were the bottom, bottom hole, right? I'm like, too high. Yeah, she's like, we want to be able to walk over them. <laughs> which proved Fantastic, because Ace literally had no idea what he was doing. I've jumped him like twice over <laughs> tiny cross rails, right? So and there were flowers. So I had, I'd prep for flowers. I bought flowers off Amazon and like kind of put them at home. But here they're like flowers and the verticals and like, oh, God. So I take him out there and this, he, there's cows in the field. He's like, oh, look at those cows. Oh, what the hell is that? And I'm like, that's a jump. <laughs> So the first course, there's nine jumps, and he stopped and walked over eight of them. Like it was <laughs> ridiculous. And I, I laughed the whole time. And I'm like, I'm I'm riding it like he's gonna jump it, right? I'm like, go, 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 go. And he would just trot right up to him and go, ah, and stop. 
It was kind of funny. Step over it. <laughs> so I put I uh, afterwards because she and I are the only two in the bottom division. She's on and and her horse proved the same way. At one point, her horse was like, "I'm gonna go out the end gate." And she was like, no, you're going to come to the jump. And he just ran his shoulder into the standard. He was like, I'm not doing that. And, and she, she stops her. I'm like, you can get over it. So she walks over. Did they bother the even counting the penalty points and jumping? He was the thing. Like, I was out there and I was like, I'm going to go now. They were like, okay. <laughs> it was so ridiculous. It was like the super friendliest baby horse show ever. And like they started out with intermediate, uh, like uh, modified height. So it, there were people jumping big stuff. And then they just ticked it down. And uh, you see everybody leaving, everybody leaving. And then there's like the two owners of the farm and Patty and I. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, nobody cared. Like, nobody cared. <laughs> they all just wanted to go home. <laughs> it was like, and it's raining. And I'm like, can I please do it again? How much to do it again? They were like, it's ten dollars round. I'm like, ten dollars well spent. Here's my money. Take my money. And so I went out and did it again. And Patty did it again too because both of our horses were like, what the hell are we supposed to do out here? Ace had never even done a dressage test. Never been an indoor. Never done even in a dressage arena. Never done a jump course. Like I mean, I only have like two jumps here at home, so it's not like he was just like trotting out. Like this is a cow. So did this truly come down to be a dressage test? Was this really all about dressage in this particular competition? Well, Glenn, I am glad you ask <laughs> because we both had a rail down, even at the walk. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was I'm literally surprised. people they were six inches off the ground. <laughs> I was surprised you only knocked one down. I didn't down. even know there were holes like... that low in the jumps. To be honest. <laughs> it was so funny. Like you could hear them while I'm like they were videoing it and laughing. <laughs> Stops. And so I took a compilation. I took the first jump of both courses and I like edit them. You can see them on my Flyover Farms Facebook page. Oh my god, I was laughing so hard, and you could hear the person videoing laughing like. <laughs> It was always the most fun going to little baby horse shows and watching the baby classes because things happen. You know, oh, they were always so much fun. People should have stuck around. If they want to see real <laughs> talent and scope and skill, I mean, geez, like, well, they, they missed it. They missed this Did show. Did Patty beat you? <clears throat> She dick might win. have won. Big Dick was the <laughs> the grand winner with like a 37.5 and I had a, like a 38.5. Oh, so it was close. It was a close, but I'm I'm pretty sure the dressage judge was like, just give him all sixes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just didn't even want to score by that <laughs> there point. There was one point, like the, the indoor has like giant windows and a golf cart drove by while Big Dick was, uh, Alistar was going and like he just like ran sideways and then just went back to work and I think she got a six. <laughs> Did they have me? Mirrors, mirrors always uh, screw up the the uh, no mirrors, no. just <laughs> open windows with and uh, right outside are the horses tied to the trailer. And Ace is so friendly; he's like, "Hey guys, what are you doing out there?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Keep trotting." <laughs> I mean, it was so well, congratulations. ridiculous. Congratulations, you survived your mammoth course. I'm impressed. I mean, you know, with that after the makeover, because when I had baby Groot, like I took him somewhere like every three days. And we competed so much in those nine months to get him prepped because he was like most horses started at zero. He started at like a negative 10. So I had to work really hard. And I think I just had like PTSD about going to horse shows. And so to go to this one and have such a good experience, like I said, Southern Hills was awesome. And just to throw it out there, I had some equipment that was on point and that correct. There's a you can see in the videos, I have this like neck strap and it's called correct connect. And I, I saw them in Kentucky and I, I got one because I was like that I, I'd seen the videos on Facebook. I held on to that thing. Like it was <laughs> like the airplane door. <laughs> I was like, keep this close. I, I was holding onto it so tight. And like, cause when he was warming up, he popped over some, they were the biggest cross rails he's ever seen. He was like, Oh, and I was like, we're not going to warm up. We're just going to go out there. And so I was holding onto it, expecting him to go crazy. And I'm glad I was holding onto it because the way he stopped and walked over it would have thrown me out the front window, you know, like trotting along. <laughs> I tell you, I want to ask you, well, by the way, congratulations to you and Patty both for surviving. You know what? We did it. And that's did the it. thing. Uh, You've got to start somewhere with these babies. I mean, yeah. they all start this way, right? Reminder, I am 46 years old and I ride <laughs> baby horses at well, home for and, like two minutes. And this so. is why you got this horse was so you could go back out and start showing again. So it's perfect. It works yeah. out great. Yeah, that, that was the reason. And, and Chad's like, you finally have a horse that you can like 
do things yeah. on. And all different. And I know you're going to do all, it's not just eventing. You're going to do all kinds of different things on him. So yeah. it'll be fun. Well, good. I'm very glad. I want to ask I you s- about his tack, his bridle specifically, but we'll do that in the post show. We have okay. a little time. Yeah. Cosquin ASU joint and hoof pellets contain quality ingredients to support joint and hoof health and leave out the fillers, molasses, and alfalfa, all while delivering the taste horses love. The colors of our ingredients shine through for a difference you can see. Visit CosequinEquine.com. That's CosequinEquine.com. Well, we weren't sure. We haven't talked since the Kentucky Derby. Mystic Dan now is... Apparently, it looks like he's going to run in the Preakness. They weren't sure whether he was going to run. It depends how he recovered. Apparently, he's recovered quite well. He's already in Maryland, and he's I, I think is doing his first run there this morning. So, I, unless something goes wrong this week, it looks like we we ha- will have him in the Preakness. And then, real quick, we don't have a lot of time, but tell the story of Lucas and the Kentucky Derby. Oh man, I was in Arizona with you know, with some friends and watching the races and I make all my breaths. I've got this app, right? <clears throat> and uh, I, you know, I'd put some money into it preemptively and I was ready and I did all my bets and I, I had uh, like $6 left over and the thing. And I was like, you know what? $2 across the board. And I was like, Lucas, pick a horse and I'll bet it for you. And I was like, he was like, well, who is it? So I read him the list of all 21 horses. Just this with this, 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 this. And I just went all the way down to the 21. He goes, I like Mystic Dan. Why did he pick that? Because nobody I, picked him. <laughs> I have like, no idea. I have no idea. And I was like, all right, well, we're going to bet him $2 across the board. Glenn won $70. <laughs> he did. 70 bucks. Yeah, he paid seventy bucks for one place show, maybe sixty eight something. Anyway, it was awesome. And so Did Lucas he get to is keep like, the money? I gave him twenty. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you don't get all of it, but at least I got all my money. You had to make up for back. everything you lost. <laughs> yeah, I was like, just let me cover my losses. It'd be great. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, but it was ridiculous. I couldn't believe he did that. So now I have this huge $70 in my account online because I had to give him cash. So I've got all this money to now bet on the brickness because <laughs> I learned my lesson so well. Yeah, boy, that was a surprise. I mean, it came out of nowhere, and neither one of us, you know, even t- we didn't even talk about They didn't talk about Mystic Dan on the pre-show for two hours. I mean, it's always the horse they never talk about that ends up winning. Well, I just, yeah, I just thought Sierra Leone is just the horse to beat, and I, but I really wanted the horse and hound horse to win. Which, by the way, the horse and hound got five thousand dollars, so their horse came in like fourteenth or something. Yeah, so. you know what? I got a message from John Nicholson. If you remember right, John Nicholson of all the friends, also they had a sponsored horse, and we we both had the the lower level sponsored horses. <laughs> They were not favorites, no. (laughs) He wrote me a note this morning and said, while America watched who would finish first in the Kentucky Derby, we were watching the battle for 15th. (laughs) (laughs) Who won? Did he win the better He won. He won by one. Oh, no. His horse came in one in front of ours. So oh, I owe him gosh. a hot brown the next time I'm in Lexington and he's there. So I'm going to Lexington <laughs> this week, but he's not going to be there. We were watching the battle for 15. <laughs> so, yeah, John, congratulations. You beat me by one. And I think Rerun had Mystic Dan. So congratulations to them. Oh, they did? Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah, well, they deserve it, too. Yeah, good job. All right, let's go to our guest for today. Victoria Tolman's going to join us. She was a guest back in 2022, and she's from the Equus Survival Trust, and they're doing a show. And they're really an organization that works on breeds that are rare and almost extinct. And they're doing a four-day endangered equines festival. So we're going to talk about that. I am pleased to welcome to the show Victoria Tolman from the Equus Survival Trust. And we're going to talk about the four-day Endangered Equines Festival and Stewardship Awards of North America. And there's a competition in this as well. Hi, Victoria. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I was just looking through the website at some of the breeds that are going to be at this show there's some I haven't even heard of. This is amazing. I'm. This is going to be such a fun, fun experience. So tell everybody what it is. Oh, we we put together uh, an exhibition, and there is also a competition portion. But everything is based on education and trying to raise awareness for all these different breeds. We put on a big event like this only every eight years. Part of the reason is because it takes a lot of planning. <laughs> And part of the reason is because our rare breed people are almost always stretched. 
they aren't able to actually do this once a year. So this is a big deal. They kind of save up for it and they get together. And the amount of networking and sharing is just amazing. It, it's always such an upbeat, positive thing. And our motto is celebrate the differences. Oh, I love that. I just love that motto in general. But where where is this taking place? This is going to be in Lexington, Virginia, at the Virginia Horse Center. Okay, so all these people that have all these horses, not for the horse show portion, but for the, the, the demonstration portion, they're all bringing in endangered equines from all over the country? Yes. Normally, we, we actually have done this in the West one time. We're hoping to repeat that. But the ones that we've done here in the East, we've been able to pull from Canada. We've been able to pull from Newfoundland. We've been able oh. to pull from New England, from the Midwest, from as far away as Texas, of course, down to Florida. And I think the one that gets the award for as farthest away was a Newfoundland pony traveled from Saskatchewan to come oh, in awesome. 2016 and did a marvelous job. Mother and daughter team. It was, it was really, really amazing. So when these horses are coming, you can go and see these horses. And, and some of the ones here we've heard of, like the Lipizzan and the Lip at Morgan and the Irish Drop. But there's also one. I lived in Arizona for 10 years, and I have never heard of the Wilbur Cruz. The Wilbur Cruz, I wish we had one coming to this one. They're a little far away. The mainstay for them is now a breeder in Colorado who inherited them directly from the ranch that helped create and preserve these. And they can actually be physically traced back to a missionary in Mexico that a lot of the missionaries then, back in the 1800s, actually bred horses just like they did cattle for, you know, helping support the mission work, right? So the the man from that was up at the ranch in Arizona went down to Mexico, secured X amount of horses, herded them back, oh, and wow. then bred them as a closed herd. Unbelievable. So what are some of the the horses that will be there? We will have probably the Akalteki is the most amount that there has ever been. The last time we did this in 2016, there were 40 of them there, which is just amazing. Wow. We will have, for the first time, a banker pony. We will have Canadian horses again. We will have the Farouz Caspian horses again. We will have the drill team, a small portion of the drill team for the Mountain Pleasure horses, which were developed in Kentucky. We will have Dale's ponies, Dartmoor ponies, Fell ponies, Gotland ponies. We will have Shires there and Suffolk Punch. Now, I did see on there that you guys do, we, we had a gentleman on, his name was Patrick Archer, and he breeds the Poitou donkey, and I know that they're on your website with breed profiles as well. Yes, the Poitous are on our list, and they have been authenticated in this country by the French, which is where they're from, from France, and there is a major breeder in Texas been a long time since we've ever had any that were close enough to come and be in one of our events, but we did have some at Equine Affair years back. That's okay. okay, all I can think about is cuteness overload. You've mentioned oh every God. kind of those ponies, and they're all like super adorable, cute ponies. <laughs> yeah, the ponies are great. I I got into rare breeds from an Arabian background, and I started with fell ponies. And at the time I started, there were 20 on the whole continent. It's been my dream because I love black horses of all kinds. And I always wanted a fell pony, but the price has kind of kept me away from fell ponies. Yeah, yeah, that was a that was a hard thing. I actually ended up having to make payments on my first two, but it took <laughs> yeah. me a while. I would have to make like payments now. Car, if I got right? one. <laughs> <laughs> but I was convinced that's what I wanted to do, and I I was not sorry. And it led me to all of this with rare beads. I had no idea at the time. It was it's been quite a journey. So what are some of the things that visitors, because we want people to come to this and see all these horses and experience this, what are some things that visitors are going to do or learn while they're there? We're actually catering to the visitors on Saturday. We're going to have a breed pavilion so they can visit the horses, talk to the breeders, see the horses in person, get some literature. 
we will have a youth tour that day and there's no participation price to be in part of the youth tour and they all get to do a treasure hunt and they get a little goodie bag at the end that's got some fun things in it, including a coloring book, a 32-page coloring book that is just EST breeds. Awesome. Uh, we will have our demonstrations that day, the drill team with a presentation of the colors and the flags that represent the countries for the ponies and the horses that are there at that particular event. And then we'll have some competitions actually on that day, driving over fences, arena obstacles. Driving over hands. fences? I've never seen that before. That sounds fun. No, not driving over fences, <laughs> driving, comma, over fences. <laughs> Yeah, that would be breeds. kind of a crazy what, like demolition derby. Hmm. <laughs> Not <laughs> sure that would go that. over well. <laughs> That's crazy. They're so, already rare. We don't want to make them rarer. <laughs> yeah, we don't need any. Yeah, you know, we don't want to start making the people rare either. So. <laughs> Which brings me to an interesting point that somebody once made in about. It was a fell pony breeder in England said it isn't so much the ponies that are in danger as it is the breeders. And that is actually a That's very a good, good point. point. Yeah. We are constantly looking for people who not only want to breed them, but want to become stewards. And there's a difference yeah. in responsibility there. So, mm. yeah, yeah, we don't want them endangered either. <laughs> so come learn about these horses, fall in love with one of them, go home and then buy all the horses and start breeding all the horses and make all the horses. Like, I mean, what? You can't lose. You can't lose. What's interesting is none of these breeds are museum pieces. They were all bred for jobs. Typically, they were bred for a versatility of jobs. So maybe they aren't the fastest or the most agile at something, but they can do the most amount of jobs. Nice. And that usually makes them terribly useful for somebody who wants to do more than one thing. Oh, my gosh. I want a Highland Pony so bad I can't stand it. Oh, that oh, is just yeah, the those are thing. really nice. We may have some at this one. We we had enough in our 2008 that we actually had classes for them, Ooh. and we had a UK judge who knew the breed and came over and judged them for us. Which, That's by the way, nice. we have another UK judge coming, and she will be judging the pony breeds for us. All right. Well, so this we try is to get appropriate judges for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's June 27, 28, 29, and 30, and it's at the Virginia Horse Center. And how get, can people still sign up to be involved? Oh, absolutely. If they want to volunteer, they just need to contact Equisurvival Trust at yahoo.com. If they want to participate, they should go to the website, look at what's there, and if they've got questions, email. We do have a Facebook group. We don't answer in detail necessarily the things there, but they can get a, a good idea of what's going on. And I try to steer away from PMs because I get too many of them <laughs> and gotcha. I can't follow up well on them. So email is the best contact. They can certainly use the phone. We still take phone calls. And the website has got a lot of information, as you can, as you've seen for the for the website for the event. So. Uh that's yes. equus-survival-trust.org and uh, or just Google Equus Survival Trust. Well, Victoria, this is going to be so much fun. I can't wait to see pictures. We wish you guys the best of luck and thank you so much for coming on, being such an awesome guest. Oh, thanks for having us and thanks for your support of the rare breeds. At Purina Animal Nutrition, we are focused on helping horses live their best life. For wholesome nutrition that performs, try Purina Omeline Horse Feed, formulated with Outlast Gastric Support Supplement to support gastric health and proper pH. It keeps your horse performing with confidence. Put our research to the test. Stop by your local Purina retailer or visit PurinaMills.com. That's PurinaMills.com. It's time for the weekly look at your equestrian first world problems. This ought to be good. Well, it usually is, and today's no different. These are, again, our listeners who are suffering, suffering with their equestrian first world problems. And it's just, you know, they, they're here to share to hopefully brighten your day. Now, I, I, I put a post on the Auditor Facebook page on Sunday asking for the submission of your problems. So if you have problems and you want to be a part of this, you have to become an auditor. How do they do that, Glenn? Just go to horseradionetwork.com and scroll down to the middle of the page. You'll see the auditor banner. And for as little as $3 a month, you too can join the party. And we have had a couple over the last couple of weeks. So we appreciate that. 
Fantastic. Thanks for joining us. Well, Jamie posted this one real late, but she got it in on time because she said she's been waiting for this because she has an equestrian first world problem. And it starts with, I am an adult and I can make my own decisions. I'm currently en route from Kentucky to North Carolina to pick up a quarter horse filly that I've been dreaming about. And now I'm poor. (laughs) (laughs) We've all, we've all made those decisions, but you're an adult, which makes you, means you can make stupid decisions with credit. (laughs) (laughs) Chantel says it's so nice outside and we still have two weeks of school left. I'm the teacher, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds like my son. He's like, I don't want to go to school. Like two weeks, dude, two weeks. He's like, I don't want to go. Lisa says, how, (laughs) this is so great. How am I supposed to get back to sleep when I just delivered my first full in the middle of the night? Also, I got pulled over by the police coming home from the barn in the middle of the night, and I'm really happy they didn't look at the placenta in the bucket of my car. <laughs> 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 don't, don't do it. No, 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 no. Oh, now we got to check it out. They draw their guns. They get back there. It's like, it's not a murdered person, okay? It's, just, it's a placenta. Janelle says, I have found the best trainer ever. And I'm overcoming problems right and left, but she's two hours away and I don't have a rig. So I have to ride her school masters. Shut up, Janelle. (laughs) Katie says my sister just got out of the hospital after gallbladder surgery and complications. But this is what that's like. This is equestrian first world problems. And it's about me. And now I have to get 11 horses ready for the dentist this morning at 8 a.m. without her help. <laughs> like it took a dark turn, but yeah, then it, it turned right back around. <laughs> Chantel said, I got, uh, this is weird. I haven't seen this one, but I got suckered into a cool Facebook ad and bought a fancy hot oil treatment for my horse to make him even shinier. And it's shipping from Australia, but I haven't bothered to get my hair cut in 10 months. A hot oil treatment? I don't know what that is, but I'm probably they now that I've said that. oil in the United States so you can heat up? Now that I've said it, we're all going to get the ads. <laughs> Australian hot oil treatment. Now it's coming. There you go. Lilla says, <laughs> for last week's Kentucky Derby, I was like so excited that my airplane had live TV and I was like totally able to watch so many of the races. But <sighs> then I missed the Derby race because my plane landed in Hawaii. <laughs> Shut up, Lilla. <laughs> That's the theme today. Shut up. <laughs> Gwen said, I had the most amazing time with Banjo at 100 Pace today, but I want to give him some time off because today was tough, but I'm leaving on Friday for a 10 day long girls trip to Bermuda. And I'm so sad. I'm not going to get to work him for like two weeks. (laughs) 10 days is a long time in Bermuda. Have you ever been there? No. It's cool. It's one of the coolest islands I've ever been to, but I couldn't spend 10 days there. It's not that big. (laughs) She's going to be with her friends drunk. to Oh, that's true. That you can Uh, do. That's easy to do in Bermuda. This is pretty cool. Tara says, I got a spot to send my Chicatique pony to Jamie to get started, but I have to wait until November. Oh, did she make an appointment? Did you make an appointment? Because if you did, you're not getting in. She made an appointment. Okay. She's paid the deposit. And All that's right. like, I, I, gl- I just, it, they just keep coming. I'm like, I don't want to, I, 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 I'm having shoulder surgery this summer. And like, I'm sorry, I don't have a spot till November. That's fine. <laughs> is it? Damn it. <laughs> Which means that, of course, the pony's going to be feral until November. You'll have more to deal with. Have you ever done a Shigatee pony? No, I'm so excited. That'd, that'd so, so November 1st comes a feral mule. So that'll oh, be good. fun. That's good. That, that'll and be your first. She she says, okay, I really want it to do cattle sorting. And it the came mule? from a kill pen. Yeah. And it came well, from a kill pen. You have a lot of cattle around. You can and, get that and, done. Well, I, and, and, and it's so abused. It has like plier marks in the ears like it's like uh, seriously bad abused and she rescued it and she just wants it to be started i said aha if you think in 30 days i'm gonna get an abused mule to be able to sort cattle you have <laughs> called the wrong person and she was like no it's okay i was thinking about leaving her for like two or three months yeah still not gonna happen <laughs> But I said, I'll give it a Do month. Do you have anybody we'll... around that can help you with the whole mule part? A farm boy will be back by then. Okay, so good. I'm going to talk to my, and I've studied mules. I've never started a mule. So the, the point of this conversation was 
November's going to be exciting because I've got a, my first mule and my first cheeky mm. pony. See, like the I'm first thing I went it. to is she just had shoulder, shoulder surgery, and then she's going to do her first, first mule. That's where I went. That's where yeah, where that's the horse pretty. Husband I went. Yeah. It's pretty much where I went. Because, <laughs> but my first, so I have shoulder surgery at the end of July. So I have all of August, all of September, and then my next horse comes October 15th. And again, I thought nobody would come. Like, no, I mean, nobody's going to pre book that far out. Uh, three people have. <laughs> October 15th, I've got a two-year-old quarter horse we're starting. So again, another first. So this will be fun. It'll be exciting. Sorry, that was a tangent. TJ says, I bought some really fancy halter for my Barbies. She got two mini horses and she calls them her Barbies. It's so cute. But they were both too big. And so now they have to wear ordinary halters. (laughs) I want to see pictures of the ones you thought you would fit. Hazel says... (laughs) I just bought a new horse and her name is Hazel. So now when my husband, horse husband yells, damn it, Hazel, I don't know who he's shouting at. <laughs> that actually is pretty smart. <laughs> I can't believe she bought a horse the same name. I mean, you're alone. And then how many Hazels are there in the world? I know. I know. I, th- I, that's so cool. Hey, I need to know how old Hazel is because you don't, that's another like Glenn, a name that hasn't been used in 50 years. My middle name is Dolores. Maybe her, yeah, who knows? Who knows? My middle and Dolores is not one you hear very often well, I'm either. I'm not going to tell her age, but I'm guessing she's more my age. That'd be my okay. guess. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, I mean, God bless her. She just got a horse named Hazel. So now she <laughs> finally learned that get a horse with your name. So when your husband yells about it, you, you can be like, stop yelling about I my horse. I don't know that there's ever been a horse named Glenn. Maybe well, a draft horse. Probably a draft horse. Challenge accepted. Probably a draft horse. Would be named Glenn. Jamie. I don't know there's ever been a horse named Jamie. Maybe. That's because we don't have great fun names. names. Yeah. We have kind of boring I, names. I'm sure there's been a racehorse like Eden's, Eden's Glen or something, you know, yeah. something like that. Forest Glen. Or something. We'll find out. Again, more assignments for you listeners. Name a horse after Glenn. Jamo says, I would. Con- <laughs> I convinced my non-horsey boyfriend to ride my horse today. And it was the very first time on a horse. And I was so excited. And when I asked him what he thought of his experience, he rolled his eyes and said, that was fine. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted fireworks. You, to be fair, like that's the kind of guy you want. You don't want a guy in your barn time. Like, it's fine. There was Super. a racehorse named Where's Glenn? There you go. Congratulations. Well, do you want to know how much Where's Glenn made? Oh, how much? $7,000. Hey, that's pretty good. I've got one in training right now that won 128 (laughs) in like four races. Carrie says, my mom was visiting me for Mother's Day and we went to the barn to visit my horse. And she was saying just how sweet and handsome he is. And then he bit her. (laughs) She said her mom wasn't hurt. Sarah says we spent the weekend riding and camping in the Wachita, Wachita? Wachita National Forest and the trails were challenging. And then we missed a couple trail markers. So we rode 13 miles, about five miles more than we'd planned. And I'm so sore. (laughs) I would be so sore. Seems like a good idea at the time. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Just like just drop the reins, the horse will find your way back. Nicole says, I passed my engineering license exam and I got invited to speak about my experience on a civil engineering podcast. But the whole time I was being interviewed, I felt like it was cheating on Glenn and Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, you were. Can't be on other podcasts. <laughs> Tracy says, I really wanted to see the Northern Lights this weekend. Did you ever see them down in Florida? No, it was cloudy that night. It was not cloudy here. I just was staring at the back of my eyelids. So I missed the whole thing. The whole Apparently, thing. Apparently, choose- a lot of people said the further south you got, they could see just a, like a tint, but the camera was actually what picked up the cool pics, you know, the coolness. Yeah. But without the camera, you couldn't really see a lot. Ooh, I didn't know that. Uh, maybe I, maybe, and yeah, because I looked out the next night and it was cloudy. So yeah. I was like, it well, just wasn't been meant to be. nothing but rain and tornadoes and storms anyway. So. Yeah, it's been real fun. Maze are fun. Tra- so Tracy said, I want to see the Northern Lights this weekend. I thought I would see them when I let the dogs out in the middle of the NFP. However, I missed my opportunity as the dogs slept through the entire night for the first time in weeks. And then so did I. <laughs> <laughs> Laura says, I got to attend two three-day clinics in the past nine days, and I've learned so much stuff. But now I'm too tired to go work with my horses. 
That's <laughs> true. That happens every time. I say sometimes I'm like, my brain hurts. I can't. My brain hurts. All right. What are two more? Let's see. Let's go with my, Tanya says my mare is boarding at my perfect place at the perfect place, just one mile from my house. And the owner of the barn mentioned, you know, she would like to take in one more horse for boarding to keep the grass down. So I get to recruit a friend to board with me. Or maybe I should just buy a second horse. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I thought uh, she was going. <laughs> obviously, you need to buy a second horse. Okay, last one. I took my baby racehorse to his first show, and we got second place out of two. <laughs> <laughs> I know who that was. <laughs> I don't know who that was. That's so weird. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, everybody. We appreciate it. If you want to do your first world problems, you have to become an auditor. So as I said, just go to horseradionetwork.com, scroll down to the middle of the page, and you can join the auditor group. Tomorrow, Karen and Jennifer will be here with the endurance episode. Karen has a full show lined up for you because endurance season is kicking off at full swing. And later in the week, it's the Equine Affair episode. That'll happen on Thursday. Jamie's going to be here. We'll both be here on Wednesday. And then you and Debbie will be here on Friday together. Yay! So uh, I'll be in Lexington getting an award or not. I don't know. We'll find out on Friday morning. So I'll be in Lexington at the HP conference with all of my journalist friends hanging out. Oh, oh you're so. not going just because of the awards. Like, you no, just I go have anyway. to speak anyway. I'm speaking on podcasting. Oh, my God. If you have to speak and then you lose, like, what? <laughs> Here, this loser is going to talk about podcasting now. Hey, this guy who we don't like enough to give an award to is going to talk to you about the thing we didn't give him the award, award for. for. Right, exactly. Oh, my God, that's hilarious. You better win. The one thing they do have is pretty good food, and, you know, it's in downtown Lexington. Oh, Normally, so they have – there's the Hilton that's out by the out by the New Circle Road out there toward the Kentucky Horse Park, the big hotel that – that's where I've been for conferences. I've never been to the downtown one. So this was at the downtown one. So it'll be a new experience for me. I haven't been down there. So it'd be fun. I'm going to get together with Joy and her boyfriend are coming down from Ohio and going to be in town. We're going to get lunch together. So I've And never... you better buy John a hot brown. And I got to buy. John's going to be gone. He'll be at the it... Preakness. Oh, well, he wins. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be at the Preakness, so I won't see him. But uh, you know who else I'm going to have lunch with that I haven't seen in... Oh. Six years is Samantha Clark. Oh, cool. Yeah, so I'm going to get to have lunch with Samantha, too. We did the two World Equestrian Game shows together over the years and have had so much fun doing those, and I'm going to get to hang out with her for a little bit. So it's just like a vacation for me, hang out with old friends. Fun. Looking forward to it. Well, And hang around. We're going to talk about equipment. Tack kind of equipment. Spay, neuter, and get.